the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ventura, California, presents a homily by intern minister at the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Rockville, Maryland, Matthew Taylor, titled The Shift, recorded on Sunday morning, February 7th, 2021. Good morning and welcome to worship with the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ventura. I'm Worship Associate Sue Brinkmeyer and I'm joined in facilitating today's service by fellow Worship Associate Amada Paris. Should you need any technical assistance during today's service, please reach out to Joe Osborne by phone or chat. He'll post his number in the chat now. We are thankful for all the members of our fabulous worship collaborative who've made this service possible. And you'll see their names on the slide at the end of this service. Our minister, the Reverend Dana Worsnop, is taking some well-deserved time away. And we are pleased to welcome to our pulpit today as our guest minister, Matthew Taylor. Matthew, who describes himself as a pro-LGBTQIA, pro-Black, Unitarian Universalist pagan, is an intern minister at the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Rockville, Maryland, as well as the founder and lead lay pastor of Covenant UU. He is also a co-vice president of diverse and revolutionary Unitarian Universalist Multicultural Ministries, also known as DRUM or D-R-U-U-M. Matthew writes and speaks about the great what ifs and the paths to liberation for all people and says he is called to a heart-led mystical ministry that highlights the intersection of earth-based magical practices, and Unitarian Universalism. I look forward to hearing from Matthew in just one moment. Let us enter sacred space. Good morning. I am Worship Associate Amada Irma Perez, and I hope everyone here has a chalice or a candle and something to light it with. Let's light our chalices together in honor of the holy light at the core of each of us and of the love that links us all. Are you ready? Here we go. This morning, our call to worship is a piece I wrote called Calling All Souls. We are calling all souls, the artist, the atheist, the seeker, the magician, the joy-filled and the heartbroken. We are calling all souls, the belabored and the beloved, the wise person and the fool, the organizer and the activist, the pacifist and the revolutionary. We are calling all souls, the youth, the elder, the ancestor. We are calling all souls to the circle of worship. We are calling all souls to come in. Blessed be, amen and ashe. 
Good morning. I'm Carolyn Bjerke, music director, and I'd like to invite you to join me in singing our opening hymn, which is Meditation on Breathing. There's three parts to it, and when we're all together, we sing all three parts at the same time, but today we're going to sing it as a meditation, repeating each verse two times, and then I'll do it two more times, and you can choose whichever part that you want to sing. And with the repetition, just let the song soak into your body. And whether you're singing or whether you're breathing, sing and breathe into the places that your body and heart may need more ease. My name is Vanessa Frank, and I'm a member of this congregation of United Unitarian Universalists, and we are united. And today I want to share with you, I am yoga, um, a story by Susan Verde, and the art is by Peter H. Reynolds. When I feel small in a world so big, When I wonder how I fit in, when the world is spinning so fast, I tell my wiggling body, be still. I tell my thinking mind, be quiet. I tell my racing breath, be slow. I close my eyes, and I make room in my mind, in my heart, to create and imagine. I am yoga. I can touch the sky. I am so tall. I can soar among the clouds. I'm so free. I can sparkle with the stars. I shimmer and shine. I can dance with the moon. I light up the night. I can sail on the sea. I go with the flow. I can open my heart and I feel love. I can see far and wide. I am focused. I can turn things upside down. I am playful. I can stand up for me. I can stand up for others. I can stand up for peace. 
I can open like a flower. I am beautiful. I can carry beauty with me. I am full. I can say, I've had enough for today. I relax. I can rest. I am calm. Now the world is at just the right speed. Now the world is just the right size. Now I see, I fit in just fine. I am yoga. I can be anything. Sometimes we all feel how huge the world is and the multiverse in which it sits. And this story helps us to breathe and feel okay with how big and how small we can be sometimes. Thank you. Each Sunday, this congregation gives away our collection to an organization in the larger community or to funds that help people in our own church. We invite you to donate online. You'll see the link on the next slide, which will also be posted in the chat as a direct link. Our offering today goes to the 805 UndocuFund Fund to provide relief to those in our county who have lost income due to the pandemic, but are not eligible for government assistance. Here's a story about someone who was recently helped by this program. 805 UndocuFund is a collective grassroots effort assisting undocumented families and individuals excluded from federal safety net programs due to their status. In the past, the fund has helped crisis-stricken immigrants affected by wildfires, mudslides, and other natural disasters. The fund relaunched last year to aid those stricken by financial hardship due to the coronavirus. The recipients largely include those in the service industry, housekeeping workers, construction workers and restaurant cooks who lost their jobs when the pandemic began. The organization works hard to locate and assist needy individuals who may not be able to read, write or speak English and therefore face barriers to applying for assistance. Since relaunching the fund last March, the demand for assistance has been overwhelming. The fund immediately received 7,000 requests for aid, reporting a need of 6.5 million to assist all of those in need. Imagine, imagine that. Our grateful father recently thanked, I'm sorry, one grateful father recently thanked the organization in a heartfelt handwritten letter, which translated from Spanish reads in part, I give thanks to everyone in the organization, to everyone who works and donated to make a family happy. Thanks to God and to you all that I have enough to pay rent and maybe I'll be able to buy some shoes and a pair of pants for my son. And I remember those days as a child growing up here. We thank you for giving generously as you always do.
like one of those Japanese boats that were made long ago. I have some cracks in me. They have been filled with gold. That's what they used back then when they had a boat to mend. It did not hide the cracks. It made them shine instead. So now every old scar shows from every time I broke, and anyone's eyes can see I'm not what I used to be, but in a collector's mind. All of these jagged lines make me more beautiful and worth a much higher price. I'm like one of those Japanese boys. I was made long. Some cracks you can see. See how they shine of gold. We are always deeply grateful for the generosity of this congregation. Your gifts are like golden threads that run throughout this community and keep us connected to one another and to the broader world. Thank you. Another practice we share each week to keep those golden threads strong between us, among us, is the sharing of joys and sorrows. You can submit a joy or a sorrow in one of two ways. Every Thursday, the email, email bulletin UUCV this week includes a link for joys and sorrows, or you can use the joy and, or sorrows link on our website, uuventura.org. 10 p.m. Saturday, is the latest time you can submit a joy or sorrow for sharing the following morning. When we are together in our physical sanctuary, we drop stones in water for each joy or sorrow. The ripples that go out represent the ways in which a joy or sorrow that touches the heart of one of us travels throughout our community to touch us all. Today, the ripples we see on our screens are virtual, but we know the connections they represent are very, very real. I invite you now to speak aloud or hold in your heart the names of those you wish to celebrate or memorialize or those who may need the loving embrace of this community. By invoking their names, we bring them into the circle of caring that we create here together. We hold these names, spoken and unspoken, 
in the silent sanctuary of our hearts. May we be truly grateful for all that is our life. Please join me in singing, We Are a Gentle, Angry People. I would like to lead you in a time of silent meditation. We will start with some words that I wrote, and then there will be some space for silence. And while you sit in silence, I'd like you to think about what is the world calling you to do? What is your soul calling you to do? Dear one, the world is calling you to be bigger, to be brighter, to be louder, to take up space and to make your mark. The world is calling you to love harder with your whole heart, to dream beyond expectations placed upon you, to live like there is no promise of tomorrow. The world is calling you to shift, to transform, to become anew. The world is calling you to come in. Blessed be. And now just a few moments of silence.
blessed be, beloveds. Hey, it's Jason here in a fake fur hat. A couple of weeks ago, I asked people to point their cameras into the direction of love. And if you want to know what love is, well, check this out. The question is why? Why are we here to say our hellos and goodbyes and disappear? This beautiful life, what is it for? To learn how to master peace or master war? There's only one. Answer that matters Even if your heart Has been shattered Whatever you want Whatever you are after Love is still The answer Mistakes. No, we're not perfect yet. Maybe God made us all from an accident. And the question that sits on everyone's lips is why should we pick ourselves up and start over again?
Dear ones, today I'm waking up different, feeling different, feeling like the weight on my shoulders has been lifted. For the first time in a while, I have felt like I can breathe, though I know so many can't. I am reminded that now is the time to reclaim who we are. And over the last four years, we have lost a part of ourselves. Some may say that the soul of America was in jeopardy. I say the soul of America was waiting to emerge. And as such, so do we. We wait to emerge. A year ago, this time would have been different. I remember this same week last year, I was prepping for my sister's birthday and I was struggling to stick to my New Year's resolution that I knew I would somehow give up within the month. We've all been there, right? We promise to ourselves that we are going to lose that last 20 pounds. We are going to start waking up earlier. We are going to start writing in the journal, yet, we don't do those things. And I must admit that with all the upheaval in the world, I had hope for the shift of the world that was signaled by the turning of the clock hands to 12 a.m. on January 1. That hope was short-lived because of the coup that would happen five days later. But after bearing witness to the inauguration a few weeks ago, I feel like we are back on the right path. I know that there's no magic button that will cause this transformation, but I know that it is happening. In the months leading up to the November elections, I could see mobilizing happen. People in our, in our different congregations signing up to write letters and to make phone calls. Posts happening on social media, urging voters to register and skill up workshops that created election defenders. Our people are activated and there is no going back to the way things used to be. So I ask you, how do you think we shift? How do you think we can continue to thrive in a world still on lockdown? I think before we can shift, we must acknowledge that the shift is happening. We must pause for a moment and take stock of our lives. I'd offer these questions to you to reflect. When was the last time you did something for yourself? When was the last time you took a break? When was the last time you dared to dream? Those may seem like simple questions, but they are sometimes the hardest thing to do. Yet they are also the answer to how we shift. Many times we choose not to shift out of fear. We fear what our families will say have we done enough? Have we accumulated enough? Are we fulfilling the dreams that our parents had for us? We fear failure, not knowing what our future outcome is and not moving forward because we fear that even our mere attempt is doomed to not succeed. I think the author, speaker, and digital strategist, Lovi Ajayi says it best. Fear has a very concrete power of keeping us from doing and saying things that are our purpose. I'm gonna say that again. Fear has a very concrete power of keeping us from doing and saying things that are our purpose. So if we let fear get in the way, it can stop us in a real way. It can keep us from doing and becoming the people we are meant to become. To make the shift means becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable. It means moving out of your comfort zone and becoming or doing something that would change who you are. 
But that's a part of the beauty, right? Shifting is an opportunity to grow and become more. I think once we make the decision to shift and we welcome the changes that will come with being uncomfortable, then we are inviting in the work that will soon follow. The work involves three things. Investing and committing to our self-care. Being strategic with our time and claiming our space. The first step is investing and committing to your self-care. We get caught in the hustle and bustle of the passing seasons. Holidays come and birthdays come and work still continues. But your self-care must be a priority. You must be willing to pause and feed your spirit, even if it's only for five minutes a day. And when I say self-care, I'm not talking about some lofty idea about spending several days in a spa or getting expensive massages. And it's not that those are a bad thing. And if you have the resources, splurge every now and again. But when I'm talking about self-care, I mean taking the time out of the day to drink a glass of water. Taking the time to have a meal if you're able. Self-care is taking care of your basic needs first. Self-care can also be taking some time to do a spiritual practice. Meditate, yoga, and even the most basic, like taking a breath. When was the last time you just sat somewhere and took three intentional breaths? You know, where you weren't rushing to start work on the next project or running out the door because you must pick up the kids. Let's do this now together. Let's just stop and breathe. (sighs) Breathe in with me. And out. (sighs) Breathe in. And breathe out. One last one. Breathe in. Hold it. And out. Mm -hmm. Committing to your self-care acknowledges that it is work. And unlike the New Year's resolution that seems to always drop, self-care looks beyond the materialistic things that operate and motivate folks in our world. And it's a reminder to focus on building relationships. When you build and cultivate happy and healthy relationships, the relationships help feed your soul instead of draining it. When you cultivate good relationships, you get a circle of friends that support you and in turn, you support them. And from this mutual support, you can bear witness to what it, look like, what it looks like to live truly in community. Now this part may be one of the hardest things for you to hear, but to be intentional about your self-care also means you must be strategic with your time. You don't owe anyone your time and you don't owe anyone excuses as to why you need a break. I'm gonna repeat this part for you too. And yes, this is important. You do not owe anyone your time and you Don't owe anyone excuses as to why you need a break. And you may hear a trend here, but taking breaks is a big part of this shift. When you are making that shift, you must take back what is yours. You must take back that time which you would so freely give away. I think for many of us, we grew up with the notion that if we think about ourselves or put ourselves first, we are doing a disservice to the world 
are we or we are being selfish when we focus only on ourselves like many things there's a balance if we focus too much on ourselves then we become motivated by ego and if we don't focus enough on ourselves then we are victims of self neglect and self care self care is somewhere in between Self-care is somewhere between being self-loving and self-deprecating. It's not an easy next step, but it is necessary. And I've learned that you must be strategic with your time because your time is valuable and your energy is valuable and you don't owe it to anyone. Your time is a currency and there is a finite supply. When we think about currency and compassionate capital, we don't think about time. There are only 24 hours in a day. And if you're sleeping 8 of those hours, then that means you have 16 hours left to do something with. Who gets to make the call on that time? Who gets to dictate how you spend it? in the times before covid-19 i would say that for those of us that are employed anywhere from 8 to 12 hours of that time was taken up by our employers so that would leave us with only about 4 hours in the day that are ours but add on the complexities of a spouse and a family and those remaining hours immediately go away and not that those are not worthy uses of your time but where is the time for you where is the time to heal where is the time for you to shift before i talk about our last step i want to pose to you the same questions i posed at the beginning of our time together but this time think about them a little bit differently when was the last time you did something for yourself when was the last time you took a break have you drunk any water today Have you made sure that you were nourished? Have you taken a nap? And when was the last time you dared to dream? Our last step in shifting happens when you begin to claim your space. Claiming your space is about owning the space that you are in, whether virtual or physical. Claiming your space is about liberation. For far too long, we let people tell us what is and isn't ours. We act like we are not an active participant because being complacent and comfortable is so much easier than it is to take ownership. Letting someone else take control means that you don't have to take responsibility for your actions. Being comfortable means going along to get along. Being comfortable means it's okay to be afraid and do nothing about it. But claiming your space changes that. Claiming your space provides an opportunity for you to act in your interest. Claiming your space means doing nothing doing something for you so that you can be the example for someone else. Claiming your space allows you to stake claim and be an active part of your own liberation. Shifting is about liberation. Shifting is about getting free. For some of us before the COVID-19 pandemic, shifting felt like it was optional. We didn't have to think about shifting because we had all the time in the world. 
We didn't have to shift because life was limitless. And now we are urged to shift because life is on pause. We are slowly shifting one to another because the shift means that we are taking this time to work on ourselves. We are shifting now because it is what is needed to ensure that the whole country makes its shift. We shift because we are the example for the youth. We shift because we are learning from the elders and ancestors. We shift because we are building the world that we believe in. We shift because it is an act of self-care. We shift because we are no longer afraid. We shift because the time is now. We shift because it is our work to do. And as we prepare to leave today, I don't expect you to have all the answers. And I must admit, I know that I don't have all the answers and I am still learning new lessons and answers every day. But I want you to leave from here today thinking a little bit bigger and a little bit brighter. I want you to think about the ways in which you are ready to shift the ways you're ready to leave your mark upon this world. Will you pray with me? Spirit of life, spirit of love, God of our understanding, we invite you into this space today and every day. We ask you today for guidance as we prepare to make a shift. We know that things are changing. They are shifting as we become the people we are meant to be. We know that the journey may be long and that the change will not happen overnight. But we know it will happen. We know that there is great wisdom happening in this moment. May we be open to the lessons you are showing us. May we be flexible as you shine the light on our paths. May you move our spirits to action. And may we move to shift this world. Amen, Ashe, and blessed be. Please join me in our closing hymn, Building a New Way. comes to an end, 
we extinguish our chalices, but not the light of faith, the warmth of community, the fire of commitment, or our ever-present awareness of the wonder that surrounds and inhabits us. These we take out into the world until we meet again. After the benediction from Matthew, you'll be invited into breakout rooms for a virtual coffee hour. You can click to join a small group of about five people. If you'd like to move on to a second or third group after a while, you can click to leave that group and join another yourself if your software allows you to do that, or you can ask to be put into another group. Even if you are new to us, especially if you are new to us, we sincerely invite you to join in. Before I begin our benediction, I would just like to thank everyone who made this worship possible today. Um, and I hope that you heard some wisdom in the words shared today. Dear one, the spirit is calling you to be bigger, to be brighter, to be louder, to take up space, to make your mark. The spirit is calling you to love harder with your whole heart. The spirit is calling you to shift, to transform, to become anew. The spirit is calling you Go forth in love, go forth with peace. Blessed be, amen, and ashe. We hope you've enjoyed The Shift, presented by Matthew Taylor, recorded on February 7th, 2021, for the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ventura, California.